What was it? I'll tell you when we're ho safe at home. Okay, I hope hope it's nothing serious. Nah. As Tom continues battling, the rip slowly stretches open as Tom's glutes bounce and punch the seams like a wall. You gulp trying to focus on not staring at Tom's backside. But the rip is getting bigger and you can see the butt cleavage swing left and right as if being handled by your own hands. <laughs> Guess I'll believe. Take your pants off. Huh? Take them off! Huh? Take them off! <laughs> He's suing it. He's suing it. Uh, uh, oh. The half-naked lion prowls on the sofa, seeking shelter with a throw pillow on his crotch as he fixes his pants. You could have just told me. Eh, this works better. How else would I take them off? I don't know, maybe ask politely, and why do you want to fix my pants? Nostalgia purposes! I rip them that much. <laughs> do I? A whole lot. I remember it started during a grocery run for Miss Georgia. I pointed out you had a huge ass hole before we stepped into the grocery store. Then you started holding your pants like you needed to take a shit. Do you have to add potty jokes in the story? Yep. Yes. Yes, so we went to the department store where to buy some needle and thread, then hid in one of those dressing, ro dressing rooms to fix them up. I remember now. You didn't even have to be in the same room. Yeah, well, I didn't want I didn't want to be alone in the mall. Like, what if they started thinking I was messing with their with their merch? You could have just told them. And then get arrested and leave your pants leave your pantsless. What kind of friend abandons his friend in the mall? Pantsless. What kind of gay friend am I? How did you become the victim here? Imagine showing your ass to the world without knowing it. <laughs> and by the way, nice job on your work. Mom and Dad already pointed out my ass still has two holes. <laughs> well, I was panicking. I kept thinking that what, what will happen if someone sees me with a half naked dude with his pants off. Eat <laughs> <laughs> my dog. I put the meat in the fridge while I fix this properly. It's gonna take longer than a minute. Yeah. My God, these two are just an old married couple. Oh God, what kind of return was that? I know I was being playful, but that came up wrong. <laughs> Let's just focus on mending these. It might take a while, but an overcast straight foot uh, should do the trick. <sighs> Half an hour later. A hungry pantsless lion is sitting next to you, relaxing with his phone in hand and foot on the table. He hands feeds you your second burger as you pull the final seams together. Um, dom. You lift his pantaloons up in the air as you marvel at your handiwork. Now for the stretch test. With a tug on the both sides, not a trace of the thread is seen. SUCCESS! <coughs> you toss into Tom's face and immediately shakes him up. <laughs> hey, I've still got burger sauce on my lips. You're just going to wash it away. What's a little stain going to do? Try out. I like them clean regardless. <laughs> Thanks though. He checks them for any other holes they might have missed. You're welcome. That should hold your ass in place. Like a bra. You used to be so shy when it comes to adult stuff. Nah, nah, the one shy, the one shy adorable cat has become an adorable adult. Ready to touch the appropriate things! <laughs> Tom ponders. And ponders. And ponders. And ponders! Ponders? Then he came up with the most heinous reply a socially inept cat could handle. Like what? <gasps> ah! Very disturbing adult stuff. Yeah, that's it. Shit, I was expecting him to turn me down. Yeah, care to put in some detail? Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, just say something generally 18 plus. Come on, say it, the D word. Jace, 
Jace, come on. You were so confident earlier when making jokes with John. And now you're so flustered when talking to Tom? <laughs> I was just joking. No need to point! Huh? Ah. Yep, that's an adult word, all right. Yeah! <laughs> Kill me. <sighs> Tom hops off the sofa, stretching his back and puts on his pants. Guess I'll be heading out now. Don't want to bother the man of the house with his night. Thanks for fixing my fixing, fixing up my pants. It's the manliest thing to do. Don't forget your meat. Oh, right. Got it. He shakes the bag of meat and places it in his bag. Oh, forgot something. What's that? Kiss, 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 kiss. Kiss, 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 kiss. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my lord. <laughs> Just cashing in. Ah, he's showing you the confiscated dollar. See ya. He ran out the door before you could react, and already you hear the gate bang closed. Um. <laughs> oh. Wednesday, 2.53 a.m. <laughs> to be continued. Uh, mm. Darkness. Waking up from the movement of the earth, you feel the house shaking your bed side to side. Oh, it's an earthquake! Earthquake? You wait for the quake to pass, listening to any cracks or respected tumbling. And it stops. All goes silent. Not a chirp from the crickets. Not a crick from the door. Not even the hoot from the from the from a hoodie. Uh, guess it's over. Clock. Can't sleep. Curse you, freaking earthquake! You decided to head down to the kitchen and find something to eat. Eat uh, oats. It'll help you sleep. Open the fridge. You'll find a bunch of baby vegetables waiting to be eaten. Mm, not up for eating baby sacrifices. Feeling groggy from the adrenaline coursing through your veins. You decide to take a, take a seat in the living room. Think about what to do while bathing in the moonlight. Sure, sure is bright tonight. It's almost as if someone turned up the brightness. Huh? Is it morning? Wait, where are we? Are we in dream world? Is it morning already? <sighs> ah, but it's still three o'clock. Did I oversleep? Ah, that's odd. The room looks so different. Then barely any color? Bizarre. Oh, wait, are we gonna have a mysterious force in this story now? Huh? A strange staticky yet coherent voice echoes out from the walls of the room. Eh? Peasant! Peasant! Hello? Oh no! It's not Copico! Cower in fear, mortal! It's Copico! Run, everybody! Run! It makes you awake, or if you drink three Copico bottles, you will die! Run! Your special mug that you won from a spin the wheel at the mall is shaking in midair. Ah, what the f- Woo! Oh my gosh! A floating shopping list! Ah! Woo! Eh. Woo! 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 Afraid? I would have been until you started making weird ghost sounds. But breath off the rest! I've been doing this game for over 20 years! Peasants cover and tremble from this! Wow. You need new material then. Now get out of my house! It can't be! I've been looking forward to carrying the living! Uh-huh. Get out. Give me that before you break it! It's my favorite mug! You snatch the cup from the air and wave your hand around, checking for the strings. Huh? To your surprise, there was no string attached. Eh, must have detached it when I, when I snatch it away. Who are you to command, oh peasant? I demand to see your lord. Why don't you... <laughs> Why don't you show yourself so I can hit you with this book, Karen? It's the holy bibble. It's the bibble. My name is not Karen. Don't care. I'm calling the police if you don't get out of here. 
<laughs> call me, call the militia. I will show them the power of a magus. And so you did. I'm calling for the Ghostbusters. What are you doing with the optic on your ear? 911, what's your emergency? A weird magician broke into my house and is playing a prank on me. Weird? Hello? 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 Do you need do you need assistance? Yes, I need assistance. Hello? Oh, son of a bi- The call disconnects after, right after you hear the operator throw her headset away. <laughs> you look down at the phone wondering why the operator scream in pain. You dialed again. 911- Yo! Same thing happened. This time it sounded like the operator headset shocked him. Where's your reinforcement now, peasant? What did you do to the phone? What in God's name is the phone? Oh, stop it, that stupid D&D medieval accent. I don't know what you did to the walls or the phone, but I'm not playing around. Do not mock me, peasant! Ah! What the hell? It's a wisp! A fiery ball, blue ball of flame appeared out of nowhere. Do not tolerate false accusations! You're a real ghost? Wait, I know who to stop this. Go, Squidward! Go! Clean up, Squidward! Clean it! Clean it! Clean it! Clean it! Clean it! Clean it! Make sure it's cleaned away from existence! And make sure that it's nowhere near Jace ever again! You're a real ghost? How dare you! I am no mere ghost! I am... Where, where, where are you going? You started running to the stairs as soon as the demon starts monologuing, fearing that I'll, it'll kill you once he finishes like every villain in a movie. Such insolence! Ah! <laughs> Without much thought, you hop over the rails and bolt for the kitchen. But it was too late, another fireball blocked your path. Not only have I not been given the proper respect, but the peasant dared to call an army against me?! Please! What, why are you doing this?! To teach you a lesson, and to tell your master that it does not meet my demands, I will burn the castle down and land! <laughs> Uh, uh, I will burn the kid's castle and then land it! Uh, may the holy fart compel you? Uh, just a second. <laughs> Come on! A little more! Uh, uh, <laughs> so hold the weather. You rush to the altar and grab the second holiest weapon at your disposal. I wonder what it is. Please, could it be crucifix, a holy water, or a freaking Hanukkah? In the name of Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit! Out of this house! Out of this house! Spirits be gone from this house! I command you to leave at once! You dare command! The room begins to shake once more, but this time the room started shifting from gray to color. Uh, uh. Huh? Uh. It's actually working? Huh? Well... Oh yeah, R remember that you're agnostic and you don't believe in this crap? And now you're you're asking for the Lord <laughs> to help you? In the name of the Father, as I am the Holy Spirit, I command you to leave this place at once! <laughs> he did an exorcism! Hooray! Meh. Hmm? 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 I did it! I cast a demon out of my own house. Hmm. You place the holy relic back at the altar and give a small prayer of thanks. Thank you, Lord, for driving the evil away. And I'm gonna eat your body. I mean, the bread of Christ. I'll forgive you for the time you sent the rats on my pocket on my, on my pet kid chicken. Amen. Well, this was a weird night. Hmm? I knock on the door and you see colors shifting from red to blue behind the door. Scurrying to the peephole, you find a familiar golden Labrador and a German Shepherd policeman waiting outside by the door. The police? Why are they here? Oh yeah, you called, remember? Looking around the room, you notice the telephone isn't set properly. The 911 call? Wait, how am I supposed to explain to them that it was a demon who came after me? Yeah, I would believe in that. This is the police! We received a 911 call for this address! I have to tell them something. Ha! Who? Ha! Who? You grab the door, the door knob, the, do the knob with the shaky hands to turned open. Thanks for coming, officer. Are you the one who called? Yeah. Are you in trouble? N not anymore. I can't just tell them a ghost tried to threaten my life. Here to explain why you called 911 early in the morning, kid. The police who's talking seems to be a little agitated, probably because, as he just said, it's early in the morning. Hey, you're you're Haley's kid, aren't you? Yes. How do you know my How do you know my mom? 
It's me, your neighbor, Uncle Butters. Don't you recognize me? This, the Labrador seems to brighten the mood, unlike his serious-looking partner, whose judging eyes says you did something wrong to him the, in a past life. Sergeant Butters, this is not appropriate behavior for your rank. Bah, I know, Miss Haley's kids more than anyone in the department, Miss Officer Hans. Hans, Hans! Sir, I respectfully ask that you follow protocol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this your first time calling, son? Y yes. The sergeant picks up his notepad from his back pocket and clicks it, clicks it open. Alright, I, I need you to tell me your name and reason why you called 911. It's Jace. Ah, that's right. You're her, her, you're her third kid. You're really grown. You really not recognize me? Sorry. But you do look familiar, sir. <laughs> Sarge. Yeah, yeah. Now, Jace, here's what I need you to do. Tell me exactly what happened tonight and Mr. Grumpy here will not put, will, will not put you in jail. Sergeant Butter snickers his partner, rolls his eyes and sulks. Okay, but I won't go into trouble, get into trouble, right? The culprit kinda disappeared. So long as you tell me and must Mr. Grumpy hear the truth. No. Uh, there was a weirdo hanging around my apartment. He was shouting something. What did he shout? I don't know, I don't know exactly what he was shouting. It sounded like he was role-playing as a, as a wizard. Was he drunk? I can't tell him he was dead! Uh, uh but maybe he was drunk and dead? Maybe? He scribbles down in his note. Can you describe this person? Uh, it was too dark to see. There, was any, there wasn't any lights where he was standing. Alright, last question. Ooh, almost there. Do you know where he went? No, he was gone by the time I got off the phone. Must have run off into the forest. But wait, there's a forest? Probably one of those kids again. Alright, we got everything we need. Are you going to tell my mom? Nah, you're an adult now, aren't you? Living on your own? Living on your own? Where's your sisters? Uh, they're abroad now. Ah, uh, yes. I heard from your mom that they already finished. Nursing, right? Now, you'll be good, okay? Uh, yes, thanks, officer. <sighs> Butters. He ruffles your hair before leaving you alone to your own service, the own devices. Phew! Mm. Huh. Looking at the cross, you can't help but take it with you upstairs to bed. Ah! Then you went back to the altar. Better take this as well. Well, I have to take the holy bibble. I'll take this with me. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Mm. Burning. Sensation of burning tickling your feet. The rattling and creaking of burnt wood and metal echoing, echoing all around you. What the hell? You couldn't move. You couldn't even look away. Rather, you relish the sight of burning buildings that people like. Screams of agony and despair cried out by men, women, and children, screaming and cursing right underneath your feet. You take sweet pleasure from it. It's as if they sing your your name in high praises. Wait, are you Satan? You felt a grin spreading across your face. A grin so wide and terrible that you fear a mirror would appear right in front of you. You, you want to stop. You want to cry. You want this nightmare to end. But you kept grinning and started to chuckle. And it grew to a chortle. Your body rits in joy as the city kept burning. It was horrifying. It was cruel. And at last, you began to laugh hysterically at the world. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> he gasped loudly, shaking the rare room, feeling like your heart is about to explode. Okay, wait a minute. Is it because they had a conversation about Christianity earlier? And that's why he's agnostic? And then all of a sudden the spirits are attacking him because he doesn't believe in in quite a higher power? Is that it? He gasped loudly, shaking the rare room, feeling like your heart is about to explode. <laughs> <laughs> Lungs expanding rapidly as, the, as if they just started working. <laughs> Lingering thoughts and feelings creeping at the edge of your mind. Horrible, testable feelings. <laughs> <laughs> then the darkness swallows it, only but a tinge left over. It was just a dream, just a dream, just a dream, just a dream. Wednesday, 4.30 a.m. Hmm? There was a knock on the door, disturbing your, your ever-needed sleep. Mm. Wait, did you twitch? Just as you were about to utter the death curse, your brain quickly reminded you you who's knocking. Right. Hmm? Crested fleeks of tears come up from your cheeks. It, mind, it reminds you of that horrible dream. Hmm. You put on a pair of socks on your old running shoes. 
What the? Oh, you, you sexy boy! Open the door, you saw a he heaving line before pulling himself up to his usual confident self, albeit still out of breath and sweating previously. Makon just arrived by the gate, keeping himself at a steady regular pace, unlike the lion who came before him. He gives you a wave, a wave while keeping his legs moving moving in place. M morning, Jace. His voice cracks. <laughs> morning. Hmm? You don't look so good. Well, duh, it's four in the morning. Tom takes a look at the clock. <laughs> it's close to five. Did you play video games all night again? Not really. The, the darn. Um, shoot, I should have just said yes. Gotta commit. <laughs> but who am I going to blame? The teenagers? The neighbors? The teenagers. Uh, let's blame the teenagers. Darn teenagers and their stupid forest party. They had a party in your backyard? No. I got to keep my facts straight. They were partying close to the forest. I even called the cops on them. That's good. We don't want a fire accident. But maybe it's karma. Remember back then? We camped out in the forest and we made such so much noise. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> we were laughing our asses off with just for hot <laughs> on fur tube. Your parents had to come over and scold us and force us to sleep. What else were we supposed to do? We ran out of snacks and ghost stories to tell. Which beats the purpose of camping. I'm still surprised you were able, able to get Wi-Fi. All you need is some aluminum foil, scotch tape, toilet roll, and a clear view of the tent. Well, good to know. Anyways, he cuts himself as off as he takes a closer look at your attire with mild distaste. You're going in that? My shoes? You lift up a leg to show the worn out soles on your running shoes. No, but it's now on the list. A list for what? <laughs> Never you mind. Do you have anything else? You'll catch a cold. But they're comfy. It's 23 degrees outside. This is how, as foretold, the cold wind behind Tom flashes through your downy fur. Making you bristle to its icy chill. <laughs> but I got nothing else besides my school clouds. Seriously? I only brought five pair of clothes with me. Two are still in the dryer. I wasn't expected to start jogging. Oh. Well, Tom plays his hand behind his neck, uh, looking up to the ceiling for an answer. Uh, after a while, he looks down in defeat. I guess you can't go today. He smiles through the sadness. You know he wanted to spend more time with you? Let's just go. Once I get going, I probably can start a tornado from how- Start a tornado from how much heat I'll be making. <laughs> you do turn into a mini furnace when you're playing. But still, I don't know why you're so concerned. Just look at Macon. You point at Macon wearing a hoodie tank top. He's, he's running around the sidewalk like a dog chasing his tail. Both of his arms have the surface area of my whole body. Between you and me and him, you're the one overdressed. You're comparing a grape to a watermelon. <laughs> surface area. You place your hands together on your chest and spread them apart. <sighs> Seriously, I'm fine. I need to make another point. I really don't want to stay here any longer. Why is that? It's haunted. Ooh. You jokingly admit, there's some doubt in your mind that what happened earlier this morning was some double dream nightmare or a crazy trip. But that doubt immediately lost its integrity by the missing cross and the Bible from its altar, evident by the contrast of dust from where they once were. Fine, fine. But if you feel sick, you have to tell me, okay? You're not. You ready? Yep. You raise your bag. Alright then. <laughs> 30 minutes later. He's cold. <laughs> we're almost there. We were already there! <laughs> and I told you to stay at the gym, but you insisted. I thought... Ah, we were... Woo, going out for ice cream! I already said that we were going for another round. And I'm pretty sure you said that we're going for another round of ice cream, eh? <laughs> you should take him to Miguel's again. He's been eating ice cream almost every day. He's going to get pudgy by the end of summer semester. <laughs> pudgy. <laughs> you can have this instead. Don't toss this your granola bar. FOOD! Without much thought, you rip open the packet and take a huge bite of it. <laughs> Between the soft chew caramel and fine dry oats, a burst of tangy sweetness overtakes the whole flavor. Mm. Wait, why are you so sad? Suddenly, you scream, you scream out with a raspy, high-pitched voice. It burns! It burns! Ah! 
Yes! What was in that? Raisins. <laughs> it freezes us! <laughs> you begin to drool on the floor with one hand on your neck and the other flailing about like that one scene in the movie that about an evil magic ring. Jace, you're getting your clothes dirty. Stupid hoe bitches! <laughs> oh, I get it now. Well, I, still, I was still a pup when that released. Can't believe I forgot about him. Jace just remembers the crazy characters. But he can't even remember half of the cast. Shire! You scream out in a wheezing, tortured shriek. <laughs> Nolly! Similar to when one of the iconic characters being tortured for the whereabouts of the evil magic ring. Hmm? You feel something rolling on your back. A non sensation that is impossible for rock. It rolls through your spine, <laughs> causing a weird tingling pleasure surging to the tip of your tail. Oh no! It must be, uh. It's either a cockroach or a beetle, or an ant. <laughs> you reach behind and pick it up. Uh, ooh! What is that? It's a large red marble. The color is odd. No light seems to pass through inside, besides the reflection of all of its, all of its surface. Inside the marble is nothing but pitch dark red. It almost seems to be swirling around like liquid. Is it an omen? What is this? What are you trying to tell us? My precious! What you got there? You scuttle up the floor in a tiring and freaky crab walk, <laughs> turning your back to Tom as you marvel at the, you marvel at the marble. Okay, fine. Imagine that this is the marble, okay? My precious. It feeds us. It's mine. It feeds us. My own. My love. My precious. After announcing your beloved love to precious, the hand of a very muscular, tall, handsome lion, ho, hobbit, takes the precious away. Precious. Precious. You're acting crazy for a marble? Give us the precious! You, you intentionally limit your height by bending your legs lower and start hopping like a frog, reaching for the precious. Tom follows along with your dumb antics and keeps the marble at eye level. Hmm. What's wrong? Oh no! Macon feels the evil! Gotten cold all of a sudden. He rested for too long. Come on, come on, Chase. Before this furnace also catches of cold, he knocks on Makon's chest, who in turn looks at him in confusion. Tom hands you the marble and starts jogging away with Makon. You pocket the marble after one last glance at its stretches sheen. Hmm. Hmm. I feel that something's gonna happen with that freaking marble, and I blame Mutt for the confusion. <laughs> Wednesday, 6.24 a.m. At the gym, Tom and Mekon are already starting out the next course of muscle torture. You take your time resting on the bench while marveling at the men. Particularly to a red mane lion. He starts off hunched forward with a bell-shaped weight in front, his back horizontally straight with his legs slightly bent, arms forward forming almost a perfect T. His ass stretching the already loose fabric to couture to his well-toned butt. And as you were about to tilt your your body for a better view, he begins to pull the weight between his legs and, pu and pull it up with a mighty pelvic thrust, swinging the weight forward to along his impressive back. Woo! Tom repeats this 12 times with your eyes glued to his weights between his legs. He places, he places the weights be hanging forward and lo and behold his hips are thrusting forward. He's barely swinging the bell anymore, rather he's swinging his hips the air while you're looking. Ah! Is he teasing me? A second at look at Tom's wavy eyebrow says, yes, he is, must resist committing public indecency. Did it. Oh, what the hell? What are you doing here? The ghost. 
of John. Then he chuckles. That made you confused and conjure up a, a head of John. Remember the times he teased you with pool noodles attached to his junk and furiously masturbating it. The time he mooned you during the night on a camping saying, <laughs> saying the weird deer is coming or coming and the time he grabbed your ass for prostate cancer. What the shorts just happened? Tom never did anything remotely similar to that. This, however, is his first. You couldn't, you couldn't be sure if he was playing just like his brother, so you ended up pulling up your wall and waited for his reaction. He winked! Until he fired a wink, blessing to the emotional wall. Ah! He continues on for the next set, looking for more energetic than ever. You spend the rest of your time doing light workouts. There's a lingering scent of chlorine with a mix of household sweet scented deodorizer as you enter the lockers. It reminds you of the dirty gifts where ten previous tenants would, have, would leave you when you needed to clean for the next tenant. You gag a little and swat the festering memory away. You have your bag slinging on your shoulder, having second thoughts whether to head back home and and shower or just go or just go through with it. You did you did bring your clothes for this. It will be a wasted opportunity. <sighs> At the locker, Sam lets you go and started fiddling with the combination lock. He picks up what appears to be a can of deodorizer. And started spraying himself all over his body. You're putting a lot of deodorant there. You say you as you wave the mist away. No, this is a quick drying spray. <laughs> the rich people spray! Hey, it works. It makes drying a lot easier. You know how bad wet fur smells. But at what cost? An arm! He looks at the label. 12 bucks. And how much is inside? About 12 ounces. Ah! You don't hiss it till you try it. He aims to spray at your hair and gives you a quick spurt. Ah, ah! A little bit of a comb here. It sucks out. It takes out the hippie duty comb and starts brushing your hair. There. Ding! Mm. <laughs> the older male started laughing, slapping his thighs in unison. Ah, oh, jeez! You never make my life any duller. He swings his arm arm around your neck and pulls you in for a side hug. Tactless to your current dressing. That's why I love hanging up with you so much. Um, Tom. You interrupted Tom already being close to him is causing another reaction. Hmm? We're still naked. Yes, we are. He lets go and turns to his locker, still blushing and rummaging around as, an, as to ex make an excuse to look busy. Come on, we should start bl brushing our fur dry before. He eyes the entrance towards the showers. They finish whatever they're doing inside. Sure, let's. Can we get out of here, please? Your ears immediately swing to the showers, trying to listen to a specific fleshy sound that you've always dreamed of hearing in li real life. Nothing but the sound of splashing water, unfortunately. He looked at Tom, who was having trouble getting his wavy tail from going under the band of his jock strap. <laughs> A memory began to, to surface the weary confusion from last night's hunting became a distant imagination. Hmm? Ah. Um, Tom? Yeah. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> just as, oh, you slap his ass! Just, just as you were about to say something, the lion jumps as his tail flings itself free from the from above the bands, causing the elastic to snap at his master's ass. Oh, okay. <laughs> God, I God, I hate my tail. It has a mind of its own. What were you saying, Jess? Jace? He tries again, this time by curling his tail like a spring. <laughs> there needs to be an extra scene like a crack scene! Like in Camp Buddy! <laughs> Later. That <laughs> Later. <laughs> you're- I thank God. You're idling by waiting for Tom to unlock his bike. Come on. Trouble it is in the wheels. Literally, he can't seem to fit any of the two keys properly, either because he has to be in a weird angle to insert the key, or the lock keeps rejecting the key out. Hmm. Oh, new hat! Seems like the perfect time to talk about something. Uh, what did you mean by being a Leo? 
Hmm? What you mean? Oh, at the bakery. Well, uh, the lion looks confused and rather perplexed with a sudden question. He closed his eyes and thought and scratched the top of his head with a key. I'm not sure how to say this, but I kind of forgot what it was all about. There has to be a reason if you're blaming your own race. I blame mine for being short. Short? You're the biggest cat I've known. Big? Not tall? You're tall in all sizes. He mocks you with a pinch on your chubby, flabby tummy. <laughs> I guess I'm bl blaming them for keeping the status quo. Tom, take up his key just below the sun and look at the notches for, for defects. Doesn't seem to be bothered by his statement. I'm surprised you're asking. You used to live in the Alinum state. Bureaucrats. Politicians. Oligarchs. Ra rallies that don't make any sense. Hmm. I don't know. I can't really say that politics was a thing in my family. Sure you have. Sure you have. Everyone in Alinum is politically driven. It's the capital state of propaganda, hypocrisy, and high crime rates. I guess I was lucky? Most of my childhood was spent in school and in my dad's apartment. Really? What about business gatherings? Business gatherings? Yeah, like... He scratches his chin with a key, trying to come up with a scenario. You know, big men gathering around the table. Mm hmm? You imagine yourself at the table surrounded by large, burly, naked men posing for the camera. <laughs> huh? Oh, the, the closest I can think of is when my aunts and uncles invited us over for dinner. Uh-huh. But isn't your dad a doctor? Surely he brought you into his office to show you off. Hmm. He does bring me to his clinic for a weekly checkup. A weekly checkup? I am a mix after all. You shrug. Oh, right. That's good to know. But what does what does all of this have to do with you being a Leo? Hmm. Tom looks away, taking his time to think while splitting the fur on his forehead with his key. I don't know anymore. He sighs and went back to tinkering with a bike lock, missing from uh, from either heat stroke or poor eye coordination. <sighs> At first, I thought your dad was traditional, but after what you've told me. I guess it's better than most pantheras. You're pretty lucky, Jace. But the Felicians usually don't get a lot of care over there. Eh? All I'm saying that my race doesn't have a lot of good history with yours. <sighs> so let's just forget about your dad and look forward to making your future here. I've already decided to just let it go. A bit forgiving, aren't you? I wouldn't mind if you kicked my dad on the chin. Just look away. I'll just look away. With a mirror on hand. Well, how benevolent of you. He waves his hand dismissively and finally unlocked the, unlocked the locks. Let's just call it even. Call it even between me and him. He did do one good thing for me. He passed the dust off from the cushions and hops on. What's that? He got me a best friend who, let, who lets me kick his dad. Mm. Now get on. Standing on the pegs with the wind on, on, in your fur. The sun blinding you with its morning rays, paws holding Tom firm to Tom's shoulders. Anxiety starts to pull in your stomach. There's a question in your heart that seeks an answer. The answer, however, lies within the person you're holding. Was Tom ever direct? I always imagined him to be a shy guy. Like that kiss last night. That was unexpected, but... But... I expected it, expected it in a way. It's not like I dislike this new side of Tom. Mm -hmm. You're moving a lot back there. Something eating you? Chase? It's nothing. You sure? Just so you know, even though we haven't talked much since I graduated, I'm still the same. The, the proud lion shows his big pearly white as he turns his head towards you. Yeah, about that. Then let it out. Don't hold back. It's going to be weird. That never stopped us before. The lion expresses with so much energy that it makes it's making you think that something, something is wrong. And your tummy uh, concurs with... With hmm, um, hmm. Come on, I want to know what you're thinking. Talk about it. I was thinking about your. D and just like that, you killed him. Tom didn't say anything, but if you place your ears closely to his head, you can hear the tone of a broken dial-up, as well as the sound of his fur being scratched by his finger. 
Wow. Welcome back. Just wow. Told you if it's going to be weird. Yeah, but wow. I know, I know. Your is amazing. Don't have to keep rubbing it in. <laughs> God damn it, Chase. Don't, don't say it like that. You can see him placing his hand on his face. His ears turning red like his mane. It's just fun. No wonder John does this. I, I bet this was John's doing. Funny that you mentioned him. I've been seeing him after you started swinging your around. What does that... What does that mean? Was he there? In spirit. <laughs> you think he was acting like John? Yep. Honestly, it freaked me out. When you were swinging your dick, he was like in the corner of my eye, waiting to attack. Shit, I shouldn't have listened to him. What was that? Ah, nothing. What? I was. Listen, you can just forget what happened at the gym. That, that wasn't me. That wasn't. That was. That was John then. Stop bringing him up. I'm being serious here. I can't help it. John's a deviant, and now you're a deviant. An imaginary arrow flew into Tom's head with a note saying, "Deviant." I was just trying to have fun. He hops, puffing his cheeks to, to a pout. You have strayed from the path, Tom! You became John too! Well, the imaginary arrow strikes true with a note saying, John, it's John too. John squared. <laughs> ah! The lion roars in a fit of rage and embarrassment. She then rehears rather than his mane. <laughs> it's fine, really. I find it really masculine. <laughs> he snaps his head away, pouting. Aw, you're cute when you pout. I'm not pouting. Definitely pouting with puffy cheeks and all. And why are you saying this after comparing me to my brother? You asked for it. I just answered. Honestly, it doesn't bother me at all. So long as you don't do it in public. So long it's private? Yeah, I... I you slide your hand to his chest and give it a little, a little squeeze. I don't like what I've seen so far. Dig! Avoid it. So, that pervert Tony. Tear. Tear! Mm. Uh, what was that? What was he all about? Don't you remember him? He's your friend back in Bradford's. Friend? I don't remember a tiger like him back in Bradford. Only friends I have is you and John. Though I don't think John was a good friend at that time. You recall that time when John jumps on your shoulders and steers you towards the indoor school swimming pool. Fortunately, none of you drowned even after you tried to push him down in your panic. You used to play with him every PE class. I remember you two compete so hard that the whole school watched. I don't remember that happening. You're lying! Re really? It was during the, the sports festival. You two were like wild animals. The ball didn't even last around before you two destroyed it. Probably why everyone likes to watch so much. <laughs> it's all coming back. The cheers, the woos, a tiger hopping with a toothy grin on his face. Oh! Wait. He can't be that skinny kid with an arrow stripe on his forehead, is he? That was Tear. No way! The Avatar was Tear? <laughs> he grew his hair! That's not all, the only thing that grew. No wonder I didn't like him when I saw him. You didn't like him? He's a. <laughs> I didn't tell you this since I was an. Innocent. Adorable. Fluffy kitten back then! Somehow you can feel Tom's eyes roll. I'm serious! You shake him, feeling betrayed. Why don't Why don't you like him? Because he. Uh, because he. Uh, because I don't like him. You You can't seem to remember why. The feeling of hate is there, but you can't find the evidence nor a reason why. That's what I thought. Whatever he did, you've probably forgotten about it and forgive him. Ah! Because he started zebra. He started it. Mm hmm. Tear? Do you doubt me? Well, yeah, because it wasn't Tyr who started it, it was John. <gasps> what? Seriously? You do know he calls people names, right? Uh, yeah. What if he got it from him? Nope. The first thing you mentioned on the dinner table when you first came into class was, Class got a pet zebra today. <laughs> An arrow with a label, Betrayal stuck in your heart. Although it didn't hurt, it just bestowed John the Eternal Bastard title. I can't believe you haven't pick on, picked on that. Ah, the killer was right next to me all along. Sounds like a great plot for a movie. Do you hate John now? Ah, I can't. But at least I have something to use against him. Oh, oi! Oh, 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 oh! Oh, oh! Wednesday, 7.42am. As Tom takes the next turn towards the parking area, there's a weird rolling sensa sensation on your sensation. 
sensation on your leg. Hmm? Mm -mm! Something pushed you off the bike, or rather, it felt like pushing against soft plastic, then it trampled, trampolined you off the bike. Ow, 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 ow! What hit me? Huh? In front of you, the environment is waving, swirling, and stretching. You back up with your butt before pushing yourself off the ground, keeping your eyes in the, on the distortion. In the corner of your eye, however, the environment was split between the distortion and normancy, but both without color. You look around to see that the distortion only surrounds the school, covering it like a dome made of wavy plastic. When a cold chill passes through, you started to feel hungry. Then another. This time you felt sleepy. Then another, but this time you feel lonely. Now there's a voice. A voice that is all too familiar. <laughs> there's no one for me. Nobody needs me. Huh? I'm a waste of space. I'm better off in the ground where no one will find me. I, I, a kitten with no future. A dead baggage to burden my... My friends and family. Stop! I'm going to die anyway. Everyone believes it. Why keep going? You spot Tom's bike, but without the rider. It's running on its own like a dog fighting its owner. Tom! 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 Tom, where are you? Chase! What happened? At first sight, you ran to him, holding him in a deep embrace, covering your face in his jacket. Hold me! Hold me! <laughs> The lion holds you tight in his arms, his presence warm and welcome. Suddenly, sleep takes control as your eyes begin to feel heavy. Chase? It spreads down to your legs, already buckling down from gravity. Your grip on Tom's jacket we weakens till finally it lets go. Then darkness. No! Oh! What is this? Animation? Hello, Chase. So, why is there animation all of a sudden? So good to finally meet face to face. But let me first apologize for our initial meeting. Initial meet. Oh, I know. I threatened to burn down your castle and whatnot. But that was a moment of weakness. A plea for help. Hmm. What? Chot got your tongue. That was a joke. A really good one, if I say so myself. Because you're a cat! Huh? Oh, not even a chuckle. Are you... Are you afraid? No, I'm just confused because all of a sudden you appear out of nowhere? Oh, don't be my boy. I'm here as a friend, as a comrade. There's nothing to fear. Is something wrong? Of course there is. This whole world is wrong. Even with my help, you still haven't taken control. <sighs> Whoops, seems like we ran out of time. I'll see you soon, Chase. Oh, and as a friend to one another, to one another a warning. Watch yourself. The world you know is only but one side of the coin. The other side already knows. Okay, let me guess. It's the marble talking to him, isn't it? Hmm? You wake with the view of the white, bright ceiling and the smell of medical supplies. Hmm, you're in a hospital. Host! Host! No, sorry! Not a hospital bed, a hospital bed. Soft yet firm pillow, crunch, scrunchy like a bag of leaves. You stood up and look around to see what you, that you're in some kind of clinic. Hello? Oh no, it's a placeholder. I wonder who could it be? Hmm, he looks very familiar. The pose looks very familiar as well. Ah, oh, you're awake. Good. Hello there. You had an accident. You're at the school clinic. Wait, are, you're the nurse? Your friend brought you in. Can you tell me your name? A large blue wolf with pecs the size of two large pillows and silky black hair comes in comes in from behind the curtains. He's wearing the same lab coat most dogs are wearing shows. White long button coat with a blue stretch out undershirt and light brown pants. That's also stretching beyond com capacity. Only missing is the stethoscope that you presumably be around his neck. And but you're more preoccupied with the load between his legs. It's huge! Oh, it's Jace. Well, Jace, Doctor Warwick. Ah, Warwick, Warwick. Okay. Well, Jace, I pl a pleasure to meet you. A pleasure to meet you too, Mister Warwick. Uh, I'm Doctor Warwick. How are you feeling? Your friend tells me you had a fall. Quickly answer the dip. Uh, have like a black burger. I'm good. Good job. His eyes, he eyes you up and down. I didn't quite catch that. Could you repeat that for me? You gulp down your gay. You gulp down your gay and reply, "I'm good." 
He leans in closer to your face, close enough that if you just lean forward, you'd be horrible. You do horrible sins against this merry man. No pain anywhere? You feel his hand touching the back of your head, expecting something. No? That's good. I'm going to get a, get, get a set of vital signs on you and check your blood sugar. You instinctively rolled up your sleeve and check your hand out of the doctor. You've done this before, I see. He placed an O2 monitor on your on your finger. Then he gently grabs your arm and wraps a, a BP cuffs on it and holding the stethoscope to skin underneath. Don't you have one of those automated ones? I prefer manually to manually take it. It's faster and more accurate. He inflates the cuffs and slowly lets the familiar whooshing air to come out. He pulls out the pen light from his breast pocket. I'm going to check out your pupils. Look straight ahead past my shoulder and try not to blink. I'll be shining a light in your eyes. You do as you were told. As the doctor finishes the test, there was a loud running screech from outside the clinic. Tom comes in with your with your bag in his hand, sweating profusely and out of breath. Out of breath? Out of breathe? <laughs> he doesn't look too good. He must have ran from the clinic to fetch your stuff after bringing you here. Is Jace okay? I'm still under diagnos uh, diagnostics. <laughs> sit down, boy! Please sit down and let me do my work. And the doctor had to push him down as the lion is too worried to do anything besides looking at you with those emerald green eyes. Thank you. The lion's concern make you worry, but, but it's also brought a smile on your face, knowing he's looking after you. I put you at ease, so you have to wave him with a smile to let him know that you're okay. Now, Jace, I need you to give me a big smile, wide as you can, like this. He demonstrates by smiling wide from ear to ear. Mm. Good. He held both his hands up in the air and asked you to grab them. You paused. Eh? The doctor is asking you to hold hands? Uh, since it says you're inner gay. <laughs> ah, yes, you're inner gay. Your you're inner gay conscience. You gulp and reach out with shaky hands. The sound of wedding bells rings in your ears as your imagination takes flight. Okay, now push against mine. In order to stave the gay away. <laughs> <laughs> you put on your competitive game face and push with all your might. <laughs> Albeit, it looks like you're taking your. <laughs> the blue brick wolf didn't even budge. And pull. <laughs> At a single budge, it's gripping you with his middle, with only his middle finger, while the rest are splayed out, mocking your strength. All right, good job. <sighs> Let's go and pick up this his chart to write again. Is that a test for constipation? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, no, I'm checking for muscle weakness. If there is a brain injury, one side may be weaker than the other, similar to stroke symptoms. All right, Jace, I would like you to read the letters on these cards. Uh, the Dill Daddy Wolf takes out a pack of cards from the drawer and shows you the first card with a big font I. Each one gets smaller, so concentrate. I A M A L L I T T L E P I G E Hey! Oh, did this? Did those cars get in there? Get in there! <laughs> He puts it away with a cheeky smile. Sorry about that. How about I enumerate five simple words and have you repeat them back to me? Mm. Despite giving him the f you face, he continues on with a smirky grin on his face. Ah, he likes to tease! Okay! Kiwi, apple, cucumber, mango, watermelon. Kakumu... Okay, I was just making sure that I was making sure if Munch is creating like an like the first letter enumeration. Like there's a hidden message here, like a cock m. In any order, uh, apple, kiwi, mango, watermelon, and the last one, uh, cucumber. Okay, uh, uh cucumber. That's right. Unfortunately, the doctor cuts you off before you could answer. Again, he scribbled something on this chart. W was that an actual test? Yes, I'm testing his short-term memory. He head trauma can affect different parts of the brain, so these tests help pinpoint which area, if any, has any injury or not. 
The symptoms can come on slowly over time as well, so he'll need to be monitored for the next day or so for any changes. Sometimes a bleed can occur slowly, which will put pressure on the brain and cause symptoms. Oh, and try to remember those five words for me. Ah, okay. I've already forgotten them. It's kiwi, apple, cucumber, mango, watermelon. You think you can send for me? Wait a minute, what? Kiwi, apple, cucumber, me Mock? Mock? M-A-W-C-K? Mock? You think you can stand for me? I guess. You roll to your side and place your feet on the ground, standing tall. How do you feel? Uh, nothing out of the ordinary. No dizziness or lightheadedness? Nausea? I guess I'm a bit sleepy, but other than that, no. Hmm. Doctor scoots his chair far farther away. Take a few steps towards me. You follow his command and walk straight towards him. Good. Well, your motor function seems intact, but the fact you lost consciousness and are having fatigue concerns me. I think you should have a CT scan done just to be sure everything everything is in working order. A CT? Isn't that expensive? You are still in this school, correct? Your health plan should help cover the cost. You may feel fine now, but brain brain bleeds can happen slowly. Losing consciousness for that long isn't normal. It's better to be for certain, just in case. But I didn't hit my head. Jace, we should do that. Do what the doctor said. I didn't hit my head. I had a helmet on, and and, it, and even if I did, my parents will kill me. Do you know how much a CT costs? No way we can pay the other half. I can't force you to get the, the CT, but if not, you should have someone monitor you for a day or two. Tom, sorry, Tom, 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 Tom. Who needs volunteering? There's Tom. If you notice any changes, nausea, headaches, excessive fatigue. Muscle weakness or loss of coordination. You need to go, go to a hospital immediately. Do you have someone that can look after you? You look to Tom, pleading him with, uh, with your eyes. <sighs> I'll do it. Stay with him at with a, for at least two days. If he feels anything that I have mentioned, immediately go to a host. Pitiful. <laughs> ah, okay. So it's not a typo. It is a host. Pitiful. A pager goes up in the doctor's pockets. Excuse me. June 25th, 2022. Wait a minute! This is last month! Breathe. Oh no, it's munch! It's mud talking! Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm still alive! Ooh, gah! <sighs> Sorry again, I just needed to make this part perfectly in line, otherwise the other rods will suffer! <laughs> now give me money! <laughs> Hello, what's this? You know what's funny? We haven't seen Rask the whole day. I never expected that Socially Awkward will go to... the fantasy route. <laughs> but anyway, this is Socially Awkward. For now, I like, I love the presentation, except for that one scene with Macon, Tyr, and the shower, okay? The, in the shower. And that one shower scene. Ah, uh, I'm so angry. <laughs> I'm so disappointed I made my So that's socially awkward and I hope to see you all again soon and thank you everybody for watching because that was great So thank you everybody for watching. My name is Zuki Cookie signing off saying I'll see you all next time Have a great day Mwah! Hello everybody, it's me cookie. Thanks for watching the video, but I want to thank my regular and happy cookies for their generous donations to my Patreon. And a super shout out to my super generous thirsty cookies, who are Jamie Levan, Corey Smith, Dennis, Francisco Ortiz, Glacier Wolf, J underscore Choi, Ballistic Gamer, Beru, Al Al, Random, Nick Morales, and Curtis Tupper. Hugs and kisses to everyone who generously donated and supported the channel. Become a Patreon so you can watch more extra content and unfiltered videos. See you in the next video. Bye bye.